Hey everyone, this is Next Archer, and today I'm going to be going over all the stuff I bought at the 127 sale. So this is the world's longest chain of yard sales that lasts for, I believe, four days. Um, got a lot of stuff. This was my best time ever at yard selling, although last year at the 127 sale was amazing as well. So we're going to go over all the stuff I bought. I'll try to name the prices that I paid for everything, although it's kind of hard to remember. Um, so let's first go off with what's in the screen, and that is a firewood bag. So this is a canvas bag. On the tag it says it's handmade. You simply put firewood in the center, and then you have two carry handles right there to carry it. thought it was really nice. paid $3 for it, and there you go. Um, next, we got a brand new Eureka Spitfire 1 Backcountry Tent. Got that for $15 at a yard sale. Um, they said it had never been opened. I'm going to open it probably tomorrow, put it up and see how I liked it. I was going to, or I was needing a tent because the Eureka Solitaire that I bought last year at the 127 sale would actually leak water, so I would have had to waterproof it, which would have cost more than $15. This tent goes on uh, Amazon normally for like 120 or something, so very happy about getting that. So let's take, let's take a look at the fixed blade knives I got. So two that I got with the or let's these three I picked up all with each other. Uh, first off is the Western. It's kind of like a K-bar style fighting knife. Leather handle is broken up. You can see the Western logo right there. Blade's still in decent condition, has its leather sheath. I'm actually going to be taking off this leather and putting on blue jean micarta handles. So that will look very neat. Next was a little boot knife with Smoky Mountain Knife Works logo on it. Apparently that is a very old logo, about right when Smoky Mountain Knife Works built their factory. Or not their factory, their uh, store. So no other logo other than Smoky Mountain Knife Works Surgical Steel Japan. Very nice little boot knife. And then this one that the person said was just kind of a junk Chinese knife. When I looked at it, it's not. It is a kukri from Nepal. However, this is not actually wood. It is um, water buffalo horn. You can see it is carved in the shape of a dragon head. Very beautiful. And I got those three for a total of $15. Sheath for the kukri is not in very good condition, but it is still leather. I don't put it in and out of that anymore. Um, I actually just have this set up on display. As I couldn't find out too much information about this carving, I was able to find uh, one that looked similar to that on Himalayan imports that said it was about from 1950. So this may be a kukri from the 50s. I'll do videos more in depth of all the things as well at a later point. Let's get back to fixed blade knives. Picked up this knife that somebody was working on right here. So it was just a bar of steel that somebody was grinding away at, kind of knife shaped. I got that for a dollar. Um, I should be able to make it into something. If not, I can always practice grinding on it. Bought some old hickory as well as other carbon steel kitchen knives right there this was kind of neat it was Stewart's handmade brand this one is a old hickory I believe the Ontario all rusted but I can clean them up I'll probably make a video showing how to clean them as well, but I'll be posting that on my Survive with Archer channel. Uh, this one is Geneva Tempered High Carbon USA. I believe this one is also, no, this is Regent Cutlery High Carbon 
Columbia. Sounds like the air conditioning just turned on. So I apologize for that. This one is not full tang. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Okay. Um, we'll go with some of the surplus type thing. Well, let's just go to random things. I got two movies, The Dark Knight and The Book of Eli. Got those for a dollar each. A plastic pry bar for 50 cents. And I'm going to see if I can use that to open up one of my phone cases. The backlight on that phone ended up dying. And I'm going to see if I can replace the screen. But I don't have one of the safe pry tools. Um, on the last day, I got this, which is a Polish bread bag. So what it's called. Oh, I forgot to mention how much I paid for uh, these. I paid less, well, about $2.50 a piece if you average them out for the um, carbon steel uh, kitchen knives. For this, I paid, I believe, $4, but I also got some other stuff with it. But very interesting, Polish bread bag. Lots of pockets in there. Looks like it will be able to connect to the back of a backpack, or even if you really rewind to, you can take it out of there, kind of wear it as a backpack. Nice handle, unissued Polish military. It did have a tag in it. Let's see if I can find that. Um, yeah, right there, but that fell out. Also got some Polish canteen or sets for two dollars a piece so, or two dollars per set. They were made all different dates. This one was 1990, some were 1980. But very nice. I like that it's a double boiler so you can have one cooking and then the other one sets on top just like that. Very cool as well as works as a lid. So, very nice. Normally these type of cook things cost like $15 a piece. So let's put that all to the side. I got a seat belt. I thought this would be good to test out rescue knives and that type of stuff. Got it for $2. They had a whole container filled with them. Um, Although when I did start looking at it, I was like, that'd be kind of cool to change into a belt. So I wish I'd have gotten a few of these, tried to make a belt, start an Etsy account or whatever. That'd have been kind of fun to try to sell custom made seat belt belts. But there you go. Very cheap buckle though. Which you have to expect that for $2. Got a forever match, which these are fun. You film with Zippo layer fluid and then you strike it on the side, just like this, and the little cotton catches on fire, or the zippo layer fluid that's on the cotton catches on fire. Got that for 50 cents at the same place I got the seat belt. Got a few axes and hatchets. So this one I was very excited about. It's actually, the head is on upside down, but it is a West German made one and a half pound hatchet head, which why I was excited about that is I already own another West German axe head, but this is a two pound, so I have the one and a half and the two pound. I saw a two and a half pound, however it was all dented up. This one has some surface rust, but will be pretty easy to remove, and then I'll repaint these blue. Very cool. I'll remove it from the handle and rehandle it and all that. Um, I got this axe head, which I did not recognize the logo. Oh, um, it, this one was $4 for the West German hatchet. This one had a very strange logo on it right there. Didn't recognize it, wondered if somebody did. Almost looks 
I don't know. Looks like a seven in the camera. The four pound. If you recognize that, let me know. Got that for about four or five dollars as well. This is a nice one. A little hatchet head. At first I was going to pass this up. It was only a dollar. They were, they were talking about how it was good steel and all that. And I was like, eh, I don't really need something this small. However, I noticed this logo right here, which you probably can't see it in the light. However, it is the Boy Scouts of America logo, and it is a Collins axe head. So for a dollar, a Boy Scout axe head. I'll probably use electrolysis or something to clear off all the rust and clean it up. But very nice. And then the last axe that I got was a double bit right here. Not really sure why I bought it. It was um, $7. I didn't recognize the brand. You can see there's part of this sticker right there. And then the actual name is right there. I'll clean it up and see how it is. Definitely will need a new handle. You can see termites have gotten to it. But there you go. Um, we still have a lot more stuff. <laughs> Next was a very exciting find. Well, let's show this first. Got some arrow for crossbow or a crossbow arrow darts for 50 cents. Uh, much better than my other ones. And a crossman air gun. This is about 50 years old, I believe. Yeah, from March 1950, as you can see there. This is a bulk fill air gun, so it doesn't use CO2 tanks. You actually have to put a pin in there, fill it, shoots a few thousand shots apparently without having to be refilled, but you do have to have an external tank. Fantastic condition, got that for $25 comes or came with the box as well as unused pellets. Uh, so let's see if you can see the box right there. Yeah, Crossman. Not in the best of condition, but yeah. The model 116. Uh, it's not wine focus, but Yep, the Crossman 116, bad condition box, but I guess good for 25 bucks. I'll probably have to get the O-rings changed and find out how to actually fill it with gas since I don't have, and it didn't come with, the external tank. Okay, now for the best, or yeah, some of my favorite stuff. I did save some of the best for last, although the Kukri was one of my favorite things. This with the horn handle. Let's go to the folding knives now. Or I got this desktop tripod. I actually got to turn the video off and try to get it to focus again. Yeah. Again, one of the things I got was a tabletop tripod. This is super heavy duty. Um, has a screw on the bottom to screw onto the table. Haven't been able to find out really anything about this. I looked up the name on the side, um, but really it looks cu either custom made or a prototype or something. But you can see on the side, let's see if you guys can see that. That's the name on it read it off. Uh, Davidson Company, Los Angeles. And then down here it says swing, uh, swing tilt. Right there. So very interesting camera stand. Very nicely made, honestly. Okay, now let's go to the folding knives. Got some fantastic deals on these. 
Uh, let's go with the uh, one I bought latest, which was a Case Rust Lock. Doesn't have its shield. I'm going to be sending this into Case. Hopefully, they'll be able to replace the shield. Blade is in pretty bad condition as well. Got it for $20. Kind of regret buying it as I probably overpaid, especially for the condition it's in. But maybe it will be a good project knife. I don't know. Got a little folding uh, Mecklins and Sons from Chicago. And of course it's not wanting to focus. Yeah. But interesting knife. It was in pretty good condition. Got it for, I believe, $3. Yeah, Mecklin's and Sons, Chicago. Next, I got a little $1 lockback, kind of a stiletto style. M1070 Stainless Steel Japan. Nothing too special, but I got it for a dollar, so can't complain. It was rather neat, and I don't own one like this. And now for, let's see, I feel like I'm missing one. I am. Be right back. Okay, so for a lot of knives that I got on, I believe it was Friday, I picked up two knives for $10 a piece, and there, it was a Benchmade. I don't remember the model number, and it doesn't say it on here. US made Benchmade though, ATS 34 hand, or ATS 34 blade. Basically unused condition. Back when they were using the Balasong logo. FRN handles, but a very nice bench made nonetheless. Also picked up the AG Russell in maroon micarta, although it does come off kind of black in this footage. But AG Russell and 1996 made in Japan. And unused condition as well. Went back on to that same guy on Sunday and picked up a Smith & Wesson Switchblade for a dollar. Smith & Wesson U U.S. Army Issue. Smith & Wesson USA. Very nice condition. I think it's an older one before Taylor Brands got a hold of them. Opens up very well, as well as a, let's see, United Custom Made, right here, Fake Damascus, that was $4, Stag Handles, it's a model number, Surgical Steel and Japan. And my favorite thing, or one of my favorite things that I got at the 127 sale is this. It is a Buck 110 finger groove with uh, water buffalo handles, or water buffalo horn handles, and raindrop Damascus blade. Absolutely beautiful. This was 75, so more than anything else that I got, there you go. Well, that was all I got at the 127 sale. 
as you can see, it was a very good sale for me. And that's about it. I will be doing videos of each thing individually, maybe some working videos showing clean it up and gain it all looking good. Um, so look forward to that. If you want to see one of the videos sooner than others, post a comment in the comment section below, and I will try to do that. I'll probably end up putting a handle on this one today, or at least removing the rest of the leather and getting the rust off. So there you go. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Have a great day.